we look at the world today with all the turmoil, the heartache, the suffering, the wars, the rumours of wars, the senseless deaths, it's easy to become discouraged and you will be discouraged if you only focus on those things. And that's why it's very important amidst the turmoil and all the madness that's happening that we present the blessed hope. And that blessed hope is none other than the coming of the Messiah with his promised inheritance. And this is what we'll be looking at today. Now I'd like to begin this presentation in Second Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 3, it tells us, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And we see that today many people mock Christians for believing in the Bible and believing in the promised Messiah who is to come a second time. Many people are like, it's been centuries, it's just a fairy tale, it's not real. So we see this prophecy is being fulfilled today. There are many scoffers in our midst that doubt the coming of Christ, that doubt the validity of the Bible. Nevertheless, if we jump to verse 9, the Lord explains why there is a delay. He tells us, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's a reason. God is love. The reason why there appears to be a delay, the reason why it's been so long is because God is love and he wants to save as many people as possible before his final coming because there are many people out there who hasn't heard the truth of the gospel. So God, in his mercy, love and patience. He is waiting for them to come to repentance. God is a loving God. He is fair and he wants to save as many people as possible. It continues, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, that word, very important, his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where dwelleth righteousness. So we see that the promise is not only related to Christ's coming, but it's also the promise of the inheritance the new earth that is to come, where dwelleth righteousness. In other words, sin will be no more. There will be no suffering, no pain. And that's what we look forward to. That is our hope. Without that hope, what's the point? So God is assuring us that it will come. Be patient and he will not tarry. Now this promise, this promise of inheritance, we also see in Romans 4 chapter 13, where it speaks of Abraham. Abraham was given this promise in a special way. And we see this in Romans chapter 4 verse 13, where it tells us, for the promise that he should be heir of the world, remember God gave Abraham the promise that he will be a father of all nations. And note that he says that the promise is that he should be heir of the world. It was not just a little portion of Canaan, Israel, which they are fighting over. It was the promise of the whole world. Abraham was to be heir of the whole world. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. So again, not just Abraham, 
but to his seeds, the one seed, and you'll find that's Christ in the moment, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So here it's speaking about the promise, the promise that God gave to Abraham. The promise God gave to Abraham was that he should be a father of a great multitude, the father of the world. But it was not only just to Abraham, we see, we see that promise was also to the seed, not seeds as many as Paul confirms, but it was the seed, which is Christ. We see this in Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 where it confirms that that seed is Christ. He saved not and to cease as of many but as of one and to die seed which is Christ. So God gave a promise to Abraham and to his seed, that seed being Christ and that is that they were to inherit the whole world and if we are in Christ the Bible confirms this in Galatians chapter 3 29 and if ye are in Christ then are ye Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. So those who also get the opportunity to partake in this promise are those who are in Christ. So the promise of the eternal inheritance we see is to Abraham, to his seed, the one seed which is Christ and to those who take on the name of Christ. If you are in Christ, then you are also heirs to the promise. And I need to emphasize that point because there are many today who think that the inheritance, their righteousness depends on being the literal seed of Abraham. And there are many today, what comes to my mind right now are the Hebrew Israelites, the black Hebrew Israelites who believe that because, well, they believe that because they are descendants of Abraham, the true Israel, that they are automatically given the promise and they are special in some way when that's not the case. The Bible is so clear on this. The promise is to Abraham to Christ and those who take on the name of Christ. Your literal heritage means nothing. And this is where the Jews, the literal Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they went wrong because they believed that they were the children of Abraham, the literal descendants, and that meant they automatically had right to that inheritance. And Christ was trying to tell them, no, if you don't believe in me, if my character doesn't dwell in you, your literal descendancy means nothing. So it's important to realise that it's not about your literal descendancies. It's if you take on the name of Christ, black, white, pink, yellow, who cares about colour? You know, that means nothing to God. It's if you take on the name of Christ. And to take on the name of Christ is more than just saying you're a Christian. It's to have his character, his life dwelling in you via the Holy Spirit. And if you have that, then you become heirs of the promise. You will also, we will also, by God's grace, enter into that purchased possession. So it's important to realise this, that the promise is to Abraham, to his seed and those who take on the name of Christ. And those who have the name of Christ will enter into that purchase possession. We see God giving this promise to Abraham more directly in Genesis chapter 17. In Genesis chapter 17, it tells us, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I'll give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. Very important. No, it was to be everlasting. And I will be their God and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. 
So we see clearly that this promise was to be an everlasting covenant, which was an everlasting possession of the land of Canaan. And we saw already in Romans 4.13 that the Lord promised Abraham the world. He was to be heir of the world. However, where is Abraham now? He's dead, right? He's in the grave awaiting the resurrection. So that means that promise has not yet been fulfilled. There are many today who believe that promise has been fulfilled in Abraham and the literal descendants of the seed are the literal Israelites. That's where they're always fighting over the land when it was nothing to do with that. It was more deep than that. Abraham and his seed, and that seed is Christ, and those who take on the name of Christ through his character were to inherit the whole world, and it was to be everlasting. And Abraham never received that promise in his earthly lifetime. The apostle Stephen confirms this in Acts chapter 7. He tells us God gave him none inheritance, not even to put his foot on it, clearly confirming that Abraham hasn't received that promise yet. It hasn't been fulfilled. We see this clearly explained in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. It tells us, begin at verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So, Hebrews confirms this clearly. That promise has not yet been fulfilled. It continues. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. So I hope you see clearly that the promise that God gave to Abraham and to his seed is the new earth, is the new Jerusalem. The Bible is so clear on that. And that's why Abraham was willing to offer his son. Isaac because he understood the promise he trusted that that promise could only come after the resurrection the reason why he was willing to sacrifice his son because he believed in the word of God he trusted the word of God and he knew that as soon as he had killed his son it was God's duty to resurrect him so the hope they had the prophets of old Abraham it was in the resurrection. And after the resurrection, they were to receive their inheritance. That was the hope that they all had. The Apostle Paul also confirms this. The Apostle Paul writes, And now I stand, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come, and then to show the reasonableness of this hope, he asks, why should it be thought a thing incredible to you that God should raise the dead? Acts chapter 26 verse 6 to 8. Interesting, note how the Apostle Paul describes the promise. He describes that promise taking place after the resurrection. And it was a strange thing for many at that time and even today that what? God can resurrect the dead, you know? And when you understand this, you won't fear death. That's why the apostles, they didn't fear death. They went to the grave happily because they understood the promise. And the question we need to ask ourselves is, do we understand the promise? Do we have that faith? Because the time is coming where we are going to be persecuted. Many of us are going to have to be martyrs for this promise, this faith that we have for standing firm on the word of God. 
So it's important to understand this, that we don't keep our minds focused on this earth. We understand that it's temporary. We understand that we are just strangers. We understand that we are just pilgrims. And when you have this mentality, the less you're going to be fighting for portions of land and wanting to rule and wanting to control. This is where the heathens get it wrong. You know, there's a current new world order being formulated right behind, right in front of us right now. Everyone's fighting for this world everybody wants to wants control and God is laughing they don't understand the promise that this world is going to be destroyed what we look forward to is that everlasting possession which takes place after the resurrection that is our hope that is what we need to understand the apostle Peter speaking about this tells us blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an what? Inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled and that faileth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. So powerful. And this is our hope, friends. This is what gives me hope. Because when you look at the world today, it's easy to become discouraged. But God is trying to tell us that this is just temporary. When God creates the new heavens and the new earth, there will be no suffering. There will be no death. Many of us who have lost loved ones in the grave, who are in Christ, they are sleeping, you know. And in the blink of an eye for them, they would wake up and see Christ. And many of us will be reunited with our loved ones, you know. So this is just to encourage you all, because it's not going to get any better in this current earth. We see what's going. We know there's... A great crisis right before our eyes and many are worried, many are fearful. But God is telling us, don't fear. Don't fear him that can kill the body, but rather fear him that can kill the body and the soul. They may kill our bodies, but if we are in Christ, God will resurrect. God will resurrect our souls. We will be completely new creatures, a new body he would give us and we'll enter into that blessed promise which God gave to Abraham which is the new heavens and the new earth you know so be encouraged and don't despair and the wicked that we see today that will be totally obliterated and we will never witness such things again because the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 30 the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Psalm 37 verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And David also understood this. He was like, why does it seem like the heathen seem to do so well? And then he understood the sanctuary. And he understood that the time is coming where they'll be burnt up as ashes never to exist no more same with satan and all the hosts of demon they have this little time now you know satan is the prince of this earth now you know he's ruling we are seeing how we are seeing the power of the dragon like coming out now getting ready to do his work but god wants us to remember that it's just for a season it's just for a time it's going to end and when it ends, it will be permanent. And then he will give us the promise. By God's grace, if we're faithful, we will join Abraham and his seed to inherit the new heavens and the new earth. And I also recommend, if you haven't done so already, to read E.J. Wagoner's book on Romans. I think it's called Wagoner on Romans. It's such a powerful book where he goes into this, to inheritance. Um, it's so powerful and I love the book because it's like short chapters so you can read it as your devotional and there's always got some hidden gem about um, what I've spoken about, about um, sin, righteousness, 
faith, the law. He just ties it in such a beautiful way and it's so easy to understand. And I think this topic is also very important. So I do urge you to get his book on that. And also he's got another great book called The Everlasting Covenant, which I highly recommend. And I hope this little presentation gave you some encouragement for those who are struggling with this. And God willing, you will see or hear from me in the next video. Take care and God bless. Thank you.